we've got the all new Range Rover Sport. Love the full size. I think I'm gonna like this. Got my grab handle. Okay, go for You'll it. I'll need it. Whoa, doesn't that sound good? This isn't even the V8. Yeah, the old V8, the old supercharged V8. This is the uh, six cylinders, quite amazing. Kind of spoiler alert. What's under the hood of this thing, Andrea? This Range Rover Sport has plenty of power options. We've got the dynamic SE model with a three liter turbocharged six cylinder and a mild hybrid system. It has an eight speed automatic transmission with 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. There's also the plug-in hybrid with the same 3-liter 6-cylinder, but more power. It combined 543 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. It gets up to 82 kilometers, that's right, 51 miles of EV range. The Sport SV with a 4.4-liter twin-turbo V8 and a mild hybrid system, 626 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque, which is 51 horsepower and 38 pound-feet of torque more than the outgoing supercharged 5-liter V8. So lots of engine options. What's not optional? What comes standard? Here are the key standard features. The Range Rover Sport comes with a 13.1-inch touchscreen with Amazon Alexa, a 13.7-inch digital driver display, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a 3D surround camera, wireless charger, leather upholstery, 20-way power heated memory front seats, a heated steering wheel, heated rear seats, 15-speaker Meridian sound system, a panoramic sunroof, a power tailgate, and 21-inch wheels. Okay, you want a vehicle with the most terrain settings, you buy a Land Rover. Mm -hmm. But we have a special one in this one. What are we going to put it in? You're going to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review, twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes. And for me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below the like button. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. To be honest, Andrea, if somebody got out of a V8 equipped Range Rover, the older model, and got into this with the six cylinder turbo and the mild hybrid driving in the city, I don't think they'd really notice much except the sound. Yeah, I don't think so either. We have got this turbocharged six cylinder and I gotta tell you, it's fantastic. The eight speed automatic transmission is tuned beautifully, mm -hmm. smooth, quick shifting. And that's why I say in the city, I think that it really gets the most out of it. Uh, when you get it on the highway and you pass, that's where it shows its hand yeah. that it is not the old V8. But anyway, I think that most people for what they're using this for, yeah. which is the urban assault vehicle, getting to the mall and going for lunch at the Four Seasons, <laughs> it's going to be just fine. <laughs> that's Andrea's world. Town. That's Cruising Andrea. Oh, Lunching please. at the Four Seasons. Please, please. <laughs> now watch, I'm going to step on the gas and we're going to gun it. Still yeah. really good. Still, Still very really good. good. I could live with this, Andrea. Yeah, you know me what? Too. Um, I think that the more I get to drive these new Range Rover, Land Rover products, yeah. the more I've really come to fall for the brand. I fall for everything except the reliability, which is coming up in our hot topic. But for everyday driving, yeah. because it comes standard with air suspension, what do you think of it? Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, it has that dynamic feel to it. The pitch and roll is amazing on this thing. It takes corners with ease. Now. Because of the higher seating position, that commanding seating position, at the same time, it kind of has a bit of a floaty feel to it. Mm -hmm. It's really great in the city. Like yeah. it is, I can totally understand why people love these things because you're cruising down to your big corner office job to pay for this thing yeah. and you're going over potholes and broken road and it just is so comfortable. The seats are amazing. Yeah. It soaks it all up. You put it in the dynamic setting. You can have a lot of fun with it. The engine is willing. The transmission does a great job. They have done an amazing job with this latest batch of Range Rovers. Yeah, they have. And this also comes standard with a low speed cruise control. You don't even need to touch the pedal at lower speeds. And then, of course, there is the special SV model, which is the most powerful, fastest Range Rover Sport ever built. So SV now replaces SVR. That's right. Okay. 
They just came out with SVR not too long ago. Now it's just SV. Now they got rid of the R. Yeah. It's just SV. Land Rover says the outstanding performance of the SV model is enabled by a combination of features that deliver a weight saving of up to 167 pounds, including the world's first 23-inch carbon fiber wheel option on a production car and Brembo carbon ceramic brakes. Now, Andrea did make a confession. I did. She went downtown shopping in huh? this car with this matte paint, and she said, I felt really rich. <laughs> like, <laughs> it looks, and, and, and plus it's brand new, and everybody's looking at it. Oh my God, everybody is looking at it. I was parking, they were looking at it. I'm driving, they're looking at it. They're looking in the window. Are you sure they weren't checking out Drea no, from the Motormouth YouTube channel? I am telling you, they were looking at this Range Rover Sport. It's hot. It oh. has such a great road presence. I mean, it's a tough one to beat it's muscular it's sexy it's sleek it's sporty all rolled into one but what about the car andrew you're talking about me <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right now would Help you go me. for this which you, you didn't deny it um <gasps> would you go for this matte paint i i i love it for a week yeah. i'm not sure i would order it this way i kind of like it i think it's super cool i hear I hear that um, if anything ever happens to it, matching it after the fact, yeah. like painting a fender or something is kind of right. tricky. But anyway, if you're in the auto repair business, uh, auto body repair, you please chime in. We'd like to know if it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to match it. But they've really done a nice job, I think, now of differentiating this Sport yeah. from the full-size Range Rover, especially at the back. They've got the single light bar. Yeah. With the full-size Range Rover, it kind of has the little mustache at each corner. Mm -hmm. This one just goes straight across. It's looking more like the Velar now. This gets 8.5 inches to 11 inches of ground clearance. It can wade in 35.4 inches of water. Comes standard with LED headlights, LED tail lights, rear fog lights, 21 inch wheels, and a temporary spare tire. We've got some extra features on this test model. In fact, $23,000 Canadian in extra features. They include... That's, nothing. That's a rounding error. <laughs> for a Range Rover, it kind of is. This gets the front fog lights, a gesture controlled power tailgate, the red brake calipers, and a black roof. So this comes standard with an air suspension. You want air suspension in a Cayenne, that's extra. You want air suspension in a GLE, that's extra. That's one of the things is this isn't inexpensive, but it does come arguably with more power, more equipment than some of those vehicles. As we can expect from Land Rover, this Range Rover Sport model has a beautiful interior design. It's comfortable. You've got these 20-way power seats that come standard, a 13.1-inch touchscreen, which is actually quite intuitive to use. We haven't had any issues with it. I paired my phone right away, set up wireless Android Auto with ease. So I actually really like this system a lot. There are complaints that there have been some glitchiness. Oh, wait a second. With it, wait but a second. It's been pretty good, except. Uh -huh. I just want to say there have been complaints about this system because this week we also have yeah. the Defender with the V8 engine, and Andrea has had nothing but problems trying to connect her phone. Yeah. So it should be the same system, and it, that one's buggy. And and this one's working well. Yeah, so this one is working really well. And so, of course, when I got into the Defender, I was thinking it's going to be so easy. Oh, no, it took quite a while to connect uh, wireless Android Auto to it. And it was like this hallelujah moment when it did, because then it started working properly. But the screen did freeze on me. All right, uh, what you have though is a very clean design in here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful materials. So you've got uh, cloth in the middle of the uh, door here. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. uh, beautifully padded all the way around. Like they don't mess around. This is, this is arguably a nicer interior, I yeah. would say, than the German competition just out of the box. Yeah, we've got some extra features in this test model, the black veneer trim that you see on the side doors. Overall, I think for this base model, it really does feel upscale. I mean, I know you're paying over 100,000 Canadian for it. It should feel upscale, it does. And it's got lots of storage. Even this center console has a refrigerator in it. Okay, so there's a fridge here. Yeah. There's space underneath where the cup holders are. There's a place right underneath the head unit for your phone. And then there's a little tray under there. So a lot of little cubby holes. Now, the main center console does have piano black yeah. in the center. 
and we're going to tackle that in Questions Coffee and Cars. One thing I'm so happy about is that it has a traditional shifter in here. We see in the new Porsche Cayenne that they've got this tiny shifter. It's no longer at the center console. This is what I like in my vehicle. So I applaud Land Rover for keeping this in the Range Rover. And they have a regular volume knob mm -hmm. and a start-stop function in the middle as well. So this is a really nice combination of it's new and modern, yeah. but it's traditional at the same time. The seats are a standout feature. The seating position is second to none, really. There's no other brand that does this kind of view with this kind of comfort that just doesn't exist except no. you get a Land Rover. And the Meridian sound system is also excellent. I've really been enjoying that, listening to all my different music. It's good. Other a la carte items that you can add to this trim include an 11.4 inch rear entertainment system, a head up display, as well as different exterior and interior packages. This is also a nice size vehicle as well. You get in the back seat, there is plenty of leg room, same comfortable seats and plenty of headroom as well. How does it stack up? Comparing the Range Rover Sport to the BMW X5 and Mercedes-Benz GLE, this Sport has 40.3 inches of front row legroom, which is about the same as these competitors. Second row legroom at 37.8 inches is a little more than the X5, but three inches less than the GLE. And there is a difference between the full-size Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport. Here's a shot of the full-size Range Rover and it has the clamshell design for the rear hatch. So you get a little tailgate. This has just the proper lift gate, which some might prefer. Also, because it has air suspension, you can raise and lower the cargo area to make it easier to load things in and out. Overall cargo capacity at 53 cubic feet and space behind the second row at 32 cubic feet is smaller than both the X5 and the GLE. All right, we're going to touch on this shiny hard plastic. Mm -hmm. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Did I miss something? No ventilated front and rear seats at this price point. You're right, the base model does not come standard with oh. ventilated front seats or ventilated rear seats. They'll they'll sell it to you. Yep. It's just optional. You can add it as an a la carte item you if can you add want. All kinds of things. Or you could go up one from the base model and that's where it's included. Is that piano black or is it just my imagination? Why do car manufacturers keep using piano black finishes? I think it because it photographs really well and mm -hmm. it looks good when it's clean. Uh, so I'm okay with it on the door cards here. Steering wheel? Uh, a little bit on the steering wheel, but that's got mm -hmm. the haptic feedback. Yeah. But this here, you know what I'd love for a manufacturer to do? I've yet to see it. Instead of having the shiny hard plastic, continue this vinyl or leather. Mm -hmm. That would look super premium. Do you know who does something like that? Acura RDX has that yes, in true. the interior. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it does look really good yeah. and it holds up really well. Oh, before we go on. Yeah. People are saying we don't actually have coffee in mm -hmm. here. Okay, I just want to show you. Let I the, do too. Let the camera, look I at that. Too. See the stain? It's already spilled a little bit yeah. and on my jeans. Yeah. So it, yeah, there's, there's, wait, I'll do, I'll do you one better. We're really drinking coffee See, here. people say, oh, you don't drink coffee. Oh, there we go. You don't drink coffee. It's like they're, the cups are empty. That is nonsense. That is, oh, wait a sec. We've got to do it British style. Ready? Because we're in a British car. Okay. That's rubbish. Complete rubbish. We and do if we were coffee. English, we'd be drinking tea. But anyway. Mm -hmm. We drink coffee. It's no lie here. This mm. is really happening in questions, coffee, and cars. As a 2021 Range Rover Sport TDI owner. Ooh. Oh. I nice, love nice the new design, but I really want the fun and fuel economy of driving a diesel, knowing that your luxury SUV will give a thousand kilometers to a tank of diesel on highway feels great. Does it ever? You feel good in your tummy when you mm -hmm. do those long distance drives. We have a diesel Cayenne, same thing, about a yeah. thousand kilometers on a highway run. That's a great engine too, the TD6 I that know. they used to have in this and the full size Range Rover. And I think it was in the Defender too. What a great engine. That was the quietest diesel I've ever driven mm. was that TD6. Now it's gone. You know, all of them were great, whether you went with the Volkswagen Group, which we know what happened there. That's what uh, we have. Yeah, that's what we Ours have. Ours is actually an Audi. Mercedes engine. Benz. We mm -hmm. had friends who owned a diesel. They loved it. I mean, there's just such a huge selection. It's a shame it's gone. The, okay, quickly before we move on to our hot topic, which is worth waiting for. So if you're wanting to produce less CO2, mm -hmm. um, 
Actually, diesels do a good job at that because CO2 is directly related to fuel economy and they do get great fuel economy. Yeah. What they're not good at is the low level particulate uh, pollution. Now they scrub a lot of it out, but it's not as clean as a gas or mm -hmm. uh, certainly not as a hybrid. That's why they do it. And the V8 that Range Rover is offering on the SV trim is um, BM coming at BMW. It's yeah, it's a engine. BMW engine, and it has 15% lower CO2 emissions than the previous 5-liter V8. But so not, as, not as good as that not diesel. Not as good, no. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? This has always been a favorite of mine. The elegance, luxury, and at the same time is rugged and capable. Has reliability improved at all? Every Land Rover we get, this is our hot topic. This is the one question everybody wants to know about. Yeah. What's the reliability like? Well, this is an all new product. It's only been out now for weeks. So we'll have to wait and see, mm -hmm. but Land Rover as a brand is... <whistles> wait, I'm not done. <laughs> At the I'm, bottom. I mean, it really is unfortunate. It It's so good. It yeah. handles incredibly well. I'm it's a sad. beautiful, it's beautiful. I know. I'm sad to say this. These stats in the recent JD Power dependability study for 2023, Land Rover is at the very bottom, last on the list. And it has it's a been, shame. And it has been for years. But, 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 the people that own these and the yeah. people that buy these absolutely love them. Yeah. And I get it. And the people that buy these or lease these are probably, many of them, flipping it out after a three-year lease and just getting the next one. And it's still under warranty and they have another car to drive if it has to go in. And uh, we know many families that are basically habitually getting these all yep. the time. Yeah, they love everything about it and they keep coming back for more. And I think the key is, is that if you have the budget for this, you obviously have the money. And it is probably true that you have other vehicles that you can drive if this one is having a few issues. So can this tow? Oh yeah, it can tow and more in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The Beast Dynamic SE model starts at just under $109,000 in Canada. And in the U.S., the Dynamic SC is just over $90,500. Here's the fuel economy for this base six-cylinder engine. 13.1 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 9.1 on the highway. That's 19 miles per gallon city, 25 miles per gallon highway. This sport can tow an impressive 7,700 pounds. If you get the SV model, it's 8,200 pounds. The warranty is four years, 80,000 kilometers, or 50,000 miles. So Andrea, you like luxury. I sure do. And you want a five passenger luxury SUV, mm -hmm. what else can you buy? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the BMW X5 with a turbocharged 3.0-liter inline-six and a 48-volt hybrid system. It has 375 horsepower and a starting price of $86,000. The Mercedes-Benz GLE 450 with a 3.0-liter inline-six-cylinder turbo with a mild hybrid. It has 375 horsepower. Pricing is not listed on the website for the 2024 model yet. The Porsche Cayenne with a 3.0-liter V6 turbo, 348 horsepower and a starting price just under $90,000. And we threw an oddball in here, the new Lexus GX with a twin turbocharged 3.4 liter V6, 349 horsepower. Pricing has not yet been confirmed. So there are four luxury SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improved. Love the way this looks. I really like the way it drives. I'd really like to see better reliability so when we review these models we can say, you got it. They are reliable. Exactly what Andrea <laughs> said. That's the other one, the reliability. Mm -hmm. This is one sweet ride. If it's in your budget, you've got a great vehicle. Now I get it. I understand why people love these so much. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.